All right, so this is a recording. Uh, this is the pre-construction meeting for 177, 179 Armstrong. Um, since we're a smaller group today, you know, I'll just start off with saying, we don't really probably have to do, you know, raise hand function or anything like that. Just, you know, be polite and in any interjections, we can keep it, you know, going that way without getting everything else. But if you prefer, if you feel like you're not being, you know, noticed or I'm missing you or something, just hit on the reactions on the bottom of the page. A little hand up. I'm sure we're all familiar with it at this point, but you can go like that. Um, and yeah, I won't take any more time in doing the introduction. I'll just pass it over to, to Jerry, Jeremy, Joey, and, and Dan. And if you guys want to share whatever information about the site and give everyone an idea of what's coming, we'll do that. And then we'll dive right into questions with the neighbors. So. I'll, just introduce, so I'll just introduce myself. I'm Joey Tiberius, so I'm part of the uh, development team um, that's going to be doing, as we know, it's going to, it's a 33 unit rental building that's, we just started uh, breaking ground this week. Uh, Jeremy, for the time being, he's our planner, in-house planning and project manager for now on the site. Uh, and Dan will be the site foreman. Uh, so Dan is someone you'll see there you know, periodically throughout every day. So if there is any immediate questions you have, he'd be the easiest one to go see on site. Uh, we will have a site trailer there in the next uh, few weeks set up. And so you'll probably be able to find Dan there. He's going to be splitting his time between there and another site, but he'll be available each day. Um, maybe I'll just quickly run through a little bit of construction time frame just to give you guys an expectations. Uh, we're predicting around a 16 month construction schedule. Um, that would be kind of worst case scenario. I'd just rather give you guys the worst case scenario and we do it in 13 months and then we're all happy that we're out of there quicker. Uh, and we're starting, as you know, we're breaking down now. You'll see us we're playing in the dirt, just kind of starting to get down to the foundation level. We're hoping uh, mid to end of next month, we'll start pouring foundations, which will take uh, about a month. And then we'll start framing. Framing will probably be the, I would say the most, the biggest annoyance for the you know immediate neighbors. So the, everyone on this call, just that's where you're going to be hearing the hammering and nails and, and all the kind of construction things that we don't like to hear. Um, we're going to respect, of course, all time frames. You know, uh, we're not going to be doing what I'm here. I'm I'm right living on Wellington right now, right near the Mizrahi building, and it's loud starting at six a.m. and it's understandably, it's a little too loud, too early, but we'll be starting, you know, a little bit later and finishing a little bit earlier because we are going to respect that we're in more of a residential neighborhood, not sitting on a main street uh, like Island Park in Wellington. Um, so like I said, we'll start framing in about two months from now, two and a half months, and then that'll last about two to three months till we get to the interior of the building. Um, and then by the time we close up the building and we're inside, the noise and disturbance should be a lot, I won't say it's going to be quiet, but it'll be a lot more manageable. Um, again, Dan will be the guy who's on site, any day-to-day -day questions. If there's any immediate questions, he'd be the one to answer. He knows a lot more about the construction day-to-day -day than I do. Um, trying to think if there's any kind of cleanup things we have on the site plan. Uh, the fencing, we're going to have the construction fencing up for the next 14 months. Permanent fencing won't be until probably a few months after completion of the site. So we'll probably be looking at end of, end of next summer before the construction fencing goes up, fall 2020, 2023. Yeah, fencing will go up as part of sort of your final landscape, so yeah. Yeah, and, we'll and as, as often as summer. Joey is, I think that the most annoying part of the neighbors might be the chipping that will come later this week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that will, but luckily we're doing it in the winter, so your windows probably won't be open and things like that. So hopefully that'll that'll help mitigate the sound. You're not doing it during the summer, so. But we will, I know Jeff is concerned, you know, I've talked to Jeff about this. We're not going to be starting at 6 a.m. or we're not on a main street. We're in a residential neighborhood, so we're going to respect that it's, Maybe a little bit more, like starting a little bit later and finishing a little earlier. So like that's kind of like our schedule time frame. I don't know if you guys, right. Dan, do you have anything you want to share before we kind of maybe open the door for some questions? No, Sorry, I, Paul, I, you have I, a question? 
Um, we just lived through the, uh, I wondered about this next month. It's only going to take you a month to do the foundation because the, we lived through a couple of months. Denise will remember well uh, of yeah. uh, the place behind my mine on Crothers. And it was about two months of, well, pretty intense banging. And I understand that that might happen. So I'm a little surprised when you say it's only going to take a month, especially in the winter. Yeah, no, I'm optimistic they'll be done the, the the breaking of the rock in one month from now. By mid to end of March, that's the schedule is to be complete. We still will then have some periodic rock breaking for services, uh, like for the roadworks. Um, but that we're going to actually delay a couple months and then we're going to start doing foundations as soon as the frost is gone. I'm not sure what next. I know they paused for a few weeks there in the middle. Uh, I know they had some issues on parking and getting street parking because they were calling us a lot, trying to find parking spaces. So I'm not sure why they stopped for a bit. They stopped for a bit, but I mean, in total, there was a good two months. Yeah. At least, eh, Denise? Yeah, but wasn't that one a bit uh, deeper? I don't know. Yeah, I, I remember was going wondering. to look. I think, did they do, did they do uh, underground park? I don't think they did underground parking, did they, Jeremy? No. No, no, no but a full basement like you guys are having a full yeah. basement as well. So I'm expecting that you would find the same um, thing. They were very good. They started, you could tell, you didn't need to set your alarm for seven. The minute oh. it was seven, it started. Oh. And the minute it was seven, it ended. Yeah. <clears throat> no. Well, we're optimistic that we can be done. If there is any delays, we'll certainly let immediate, like we're going to keep the immediate neighbors informed. Anyone that's I really like to keep everyone that's touching the site informed on what's going on, any day-to-day -day issues. Someone that's four blocks down the street, I'm not too concerned of what their worries are. It's more the people that are immediately touching the site. So I kind of like having these pre-meetings, you know, it should just get, get questions, almost like a little bit of a QA. and a anything you guys have or concerns you have, it's good to address right now with everyone here. Yeah, go ahead, Cheryl. So you were just talking about the whole ramming. Will you be putting up um, the mesh on the fencing to stop the chips from flying uh, into neighbors' yards? Because we've had some issues on other construction sites with that. In fact, rocks, not just chips, rocks. That's a good question. I'll make, I'll make a note. I'm gonna talk to the uh, servicing guys. I think the way they do it is they kind of see how it chips out. If it breaks out nicely, then it's not needed. If it does start, seeing that it's starting to have flying, then we put up a mesh around the construction fence. So how do That's you determine that? Or do you look at neighbors' properties to see if there's chips there? Or uh, we'll know. They talk? know as soon as they start if things are flying. Do they? Okay. If they see flying, they'll, they'll see that. We've had other construction crews tell us that it didn't happen when we've got photos of all kinds of chips. So that doesn't always quite ring true. Um, okay. So Dan, if you yeah. want to take a note of that, Dan, to bring up to Omar, let's see. Uh, they're already on site now, so let's see what. Yeah, I'm going to be, uh, I'll be there starting tomorrow to do a little more monitoring there, and we'll see how it goes with the breaking. Good. No, they're starting to plan breaking until next week. This week's just removal of the, the cleaning top, up, but top, yeah, top layer of soil and dirt and stuff is there. Yeah, it all depends on the shell. If it's a shell rock there, so which is easy to break and then it doesn't shatter. So it breaks in bigger pieces. But um, I'll be having a conversation with the guys tomorrow. Paula, did you notice the site behind you if they had stuff flying around when they're hole ramming? You're on, you're on mute, Paula. There you go. Sorry. Um, no, I, I didn't uh, see anything in the backyard then. But they were a little back from there. But I think that they're, the problem with the one behind me was more to the side. Okay. Like there was a lot of issues with the home that was like right on there. Um, and I think that's where most of the attention. I did want to mention to you guys before I forget that uh, thanks for keeping the good tree. That's almost like right in Denise's backyard there between my neighbor Howard and that. Yeah. That tree is a good tree. The rest were all junk. Yeah. So it was good that that one was kept. We had asked for that to be kept, and it was. So thank yeah, you. That's for on that. our landscape plan that that was to be retained. Yeah. 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 I think, Paula, you met my partner, Jean Desjardins, a few times. So, yeah. Yeah. And I had, we talked about, you know, if there were any good trees to leave, like not the junk ones. Yeah. The Manitoba maples that had sort of grown in that. But yeah, the good tree is left. So that's very good. 
and then we'll look for more, of course. We'll be bugging you for more trees, of course, but you know yeah. that. Yeah, no, we're hoping. There's a lot of trees on the new landscape plan, so we'll be replacing a lot, a lot of trees, yeah. 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 And that's approved by the city, and we'll be following those, those approved plans. Okay. That's it for us on a presentation side. Um, so you can sort of open up to any other questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep them going that way. Um, I see a couple more people have arrived. So I'll just say, you know, if you're there and you, you're afraid to speak or anything, just feel free to, to raise your hand. Is or that a hand up with uh, Alana? Is there a hand up there? I don't know if that's. Oh, I don't see one. Oh, no. It's just, no, it's not a hand there. Let's see if there was but, yeah. Dan, I'm wondering, can you share your phone number uh, so that we can give it to the neighbors that are here, but also the neighbors I'm making notes for? Yeah, if you give us uh, a couple of, once we get Dan on there, he's going to have a site, a site number just for the site. Okay. So we just have it, we just have to get him that uh, mobile number for that. Because right now what we do is we have phones for particular sites. So we'll get, uh, we'll get something out in the next two weeks or so once we get in there full time. If there's any immediate concern, you got to get out to someone. There's always a foreman on site right now that's with the servicing crew. His name would be uh, Omar. He wasn't able to make it tonight, but he's there, you know, day to day right now moving forward. Okay, and can you then make a flyer or something and drop it in neighbors' mailboxes once Dan's got his phone number? Yeah, yeah, we can do, do a drop around the site. We'll put it around, again, the four or five houses around the site, I think is who we're more gearing towards. I think that's everybody that's kind of in this call right now. Is there anybody here that's not directly adjacent to the property line? I don't know. Or is everybody kind of the immediate neighbors? I'm with the community association. Okay. But I've chatted with two of the neighbors who okay. don't have internet or computers. So okay. that's why, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a job for all the immediate. Yeah, that'd be excellent. Um, and Denise, I see your hands up if you'd like to <laughs> Yeah, um, I know that my my bell line runs pretty much from my house to like right over that yeah. area. Just wondering if there's going to be any service interruption or when you plan on addressing that. Ah, uh, we need to talk to you. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, we were hoping we could arrange with Bell to have your line moved so it's because it is in the way. <laughs> yes. So in order yeah. to, to do that without uh, interrupting, we want to set it up so that we well, clearly I have to be interrupted at some point, but we'll sort of schedule yeah. it so you don't lose the internet at some point yeah thanks so, <laughs> yeah it'd be great um, yeah trying to get Bell's attention is quite hard <laughs> oh, great. So hopefully we can work with you as a customer to have it moved so uh, maybe you could uh, send us an email after there after the meeting so we can uh, coordinate with you okay um, Jeremy has Bell given you a game plan on what they want to do are they going to keep it overhead or are they going to bury it so we do have an approved plan from Bell. They, they have a, they're going to, the poles in the backyard that are in, sort of on our site are end of life, right? You can see they're kind of basically look like toothpicks now from what they used to be. Um, so Bell sort of has looked at our construction plans and they have a new plan that's been a, like approved by us and approved by them to, to relocate and to the poles to continue to serve everybody that's sort of around uh, the area. The problem is uh, getting Bell to execute it's the issue right now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so there is an approved plan. Um, see if I can bring it up. It just they're placing poles in different spots in order to to make sure that they can service the overhead wiring to uh, to you guys because right now the current pole sort of runs through our building, yeah. uh, so they'll be placing some new poles at the rear in the landscaped area. And then one actually between our building and the properties on the west in order to sort of facilitate overhead wires off to, to those properties on the, the west side of us. Let's see if I can dig up the plan. If you, if you care to see where the poles are going, but they, I mean, they're they're going on our property, but just in different locations to sell overhead, overhead wiring, so. So they are still going overhead, they're not going underground. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, Bell wasn't interested in doing underground digging. And it's also shared with Rogers, right? So it's a bit of a, coordination and for something small like this they're just not interested in getting together on it um, you should be able to share if you, if you yeah you're gonna give me a few minutes here to find it <laughs> yeah well we'll, yeah. we'll keep going with uh with questions yeah. um paulette denise or cheryl do you guys have any more i can keep them going and happy to take any questions in the chat or um you know 
speaking from anyone else. <laughs> Here, go ahead, Cheryl. I yeah, so I have lots of questions, but um, <laughs> you know, I can wait till the end on some of them. Um, so parking for the workers, where will they be parking? Because there's no on-street parking on Armstrong and the side streets are, are tricky, especially in the winter. We're almost out of that, thank God, but there's next winter. Uh, and also, will you be getting a road encroachment permit to pile supplies or will you be piling it in the back of the property? Um, just again, because Armstrong is very narrow. So then you need flag people and stuff like that. I, I don't believe we're gonna need any, any encroachments for materials. We do have the 268 Carruthers, uh, yeah, 268 Carruthers site. So that's gonna be a vacant lot where we can use this, they call it like staging materials, staging places. Um, and the back of our site, what was gonna be a parking lot, which is now just a landscape area, that's gonna be kind of an empty portion of the site as well. So we're anticipating that we'll be able to facilitate parking just within our site, uh, at least for the immediate future. Once we get really into the finishing, uh, depending on the amount of guys you have, it's not an overly large building, I don't know, Dan, about you, but I don't think we'll ever have too many more than, you know, 12 guys on site at one time. No, and regarding vehicles, a lot of them party now together. So, so, so they gather in one vehicle, especially when it's close area like that and it's small, no parking space. Yeah, we're fortunate. I mean, you don't, you don't see this a lot in, a, in an infill site like this where you have a full lot that sits empty. So we're not planning on doing anything on that Carruthers site until the building is pretty well complete. Good. We do have the driveway as well and the rear yard just for staging and stuff like that. If you allow me sharing, I can put up the, the pole location dilly thing. And it's also our site plan, so you can take a look. Yeah. Uh, there, you should be good. There, you go, get that. Yeah. yeah, so the this was drawn up by Bell, so they're is where they're providing, uh, going to be providing new poles. So actually, believe it or not, two poles can be replaced by five. <laughs> um, but that was what they needed in order to facilitate uh, serving uh, everybody. So uh, the red marks here with the new poles. And then as you can see here, this is a, our vacant lot here at, at 268 uh, Carruthers. So we'll have some space there for staging as well as in the back as down the driveway. So we anticipate we'll be able to do most of our staging on the site. So. Don't think we'll need a, an encroachment permit on the on the street. I'm trying is fairly narrow, so it wouldn't necessarily facilitate very well for that, anyways. Cheryl, I think you said you had a few uh, a few questions. If you want to kind of fire through some of them. Sure. Um, so, in terms of the construction fencing, uh, this is just an ask for you. If you could keep it back from the sidewalk, so that in the winter next winter um if if you've still got the fencing up at that time that the the plow can actually plow the sidewalk because we're having problems on other construction sites in the area where the plow can't get there because there's and i think the pole is on that side if i remember correctly the hydro pole out front so between the hydro pole and the construction fence the little plow can't get by and uh, then people end up having a tromp through the snow or go on another sidewalk. So that's the utility pole there. So it's on the outs on the road side of the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah but still yeah. it's, you know, the sidewalks are really narrow. Yeah. So I can name you several sites where this is an issue this winter and we have to keep calling 311 and talk to the construction crew. So that would next be- winter, Next winter, we should be good. Cause I think by next winter we'll be totally framed. We'll be sort of closed in. We'll be, I don't think construction fencing will be an issue there. We, right? okay. For us, we're, we're kind of inside the building at that point, so. And even the rest of this winter, should we get a big snowstorm? Uh, before it's over if you I think the fencing is is fine now but if it doesn't go out any further we should be fine the location of the fencing right now is set by the fact that the existing building that was here as so you can see that kind of in the background you can see this this hashing area here that's where the foundation is so currently there's a hole there because that was the bottom of the foundation so we had to have to set the found <laughs> the fencing there and there sort of to protect people from falling in that hole so that that's why it's set there uh, we couldn't push it back any farther, but but totally understood there. And, and you'll see, I guess, the, the new building will be set back <laughs> considerably a, a large amount from the 
from the existing uh, building that was sitting on that corner. The, the uh, but it's, uh, it's a good point, building. Shell, and it's worth, you know, yeah. we'll make sure we take that into consideration when the fence does get moved around over the next month or two. Yeah. Um, so I, there's another question in the chat. I'll let them go ahead. Uh, all truck entrances are going to be in from Armstrong for now, for the immediate future, unless needed. So and where will we trucks? It'll be coming in through the site directly where the road is currently now. Sean. And where will the trucks go? Are they heading out to Parkdale then? Or which way will they be going from Armstrong? I assume they go right back out to Parkdale to the busiest street, but we're, we don't see too many. This isn't a, a high rise site. It's not like we're going to have 18 wheelers coming through here. Uh, the only time we'll see big trucks like that will be just during the framing stages. Yeah. What's for now, for now, they're removing dirt off the site, and so yeah, they would be heading. They're heading out of town with it, so I think they'd be heading to the highway. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll leave some open space for anyone to speak if they if they'd like, or to let anyone write in into the chat. And I'm just kind of browsing some of the the plans, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there any Kind of environmental remediation you have to do on site is there any substances that you guys are going to have to deal with or is that not no no it's a clean site okay so we're, we're cleared there yeah awesome just wanted to to make sure while I'm going through everything um are you adding more trees um than was in the original site plan um See you said can... you're adding lots of trees yeah, yeah. So this is the tree plan here. Uh, this is our landscape plan, it's approved by the city. So to see here, this is the one that you'll find up on um, Dev Apps if you want to take a look. Um, yeah. So all of these round things are different types of trees or uh, sure. medium size, larger size. Uh, so if I go in here. This is a, this is a <laughs> hard to see all at the same time, but uh, so this would be the existing tree, I believe, but uh oh man i don't know my my i'm not a <laughs> service berries dogwoods uh, st john's warts white lilacs japanese lilacs nanberries meadow sweets so they, they're all various uh, coatings and it's when these, all these circles are here uh you'll see the different types of trees and things like that and they're on there and uh and then that will be the existing tree that's retained as well as this one here over the existing ones we are we're, we're filling the, the property line with trees but again it's gonna you know i'd like to say it's gonna be complete privacy right away but obviously the trees aren't going to be mature they're i don't know dan what do you think they're planted at what maybe a four foot height well it all depends we sometimes we're able to have them a little uh, taller it all depends what is available um from the farms yeah. But we got to see some that they were like almost three meters. Hi, it's Denise again. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my husband is here now. John. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Oh yes, uh, our our lot our lot is the one affected by the where the very the three three nine Hinchy. Our backyard is uh, facing the where the trees are are going to be. Okay. Um, is there any way uh, at all to, to request a, a little bit more height to those trees when they're planted? Because you know we're we're uh, uh, we're used to having a fully treed backyard, and it, it it sure would be nice to have a little bit of uh, maturity to those instead of um, seedlings. You know, you know what I mean. It's definitely something we can do. We'll get our when it comes to after obviously next not this summer but next summer. Um, it's something we can investigate to see what's available in, in the market at that time, depending like right now it's a, there's a shortage, you know, availability, but in a year and a half. Yeah. It comes available. Just, yeah, if it's available, just want to put a request in there. That's all just because yeah. that's, you know, we're kind of affected or we have a, we have a window looking onto our deck uh, according to the plan. So it's, you know, it's, it'd be nice to have a little bit of height there. Okay. It's been a few years anyway. Thank you. Um, Paulette again here, um, at the very uh, end of that uh, diagonal line where you've got a circle there, that's where there are three mature cedar trees. When I had conversations early on about this, I was told they were remaining. 
Sorry, uh, where? I think uh, right there, right where you are, Jeremy, right about there. No, at the very back of my lot. The very top of the triangle. Yeah. Yeah, right there in between that shed and the top of the line here that is, there are three very, very tall uh, cedar trees. And uh, I was told in my earlier conversations, like a year ago and that, that they would be kept. And are they what gone now or are they still there? They're still there. I think whatever's there right now, we're hoping can stay. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if okay. you can see it. It's because very light. Saw... <laughs> this, this is actually your fence here, right? It's actually on our, it's on our property. It doesn't really fall yes, the survey line, I know. But... I know my fence. Yeah, so. I only bought the house two years ago, so the fence was there. Yeah. Yes, I know it's on your property and that you will be moving the fence. But those three cedar trees go between the two properties and we want to keep them. They're yeah, really they're... home to a lot of birds in the neighborhood. Yeah, oh, they're I guarantee you if we can if we can physically keep the trees, we definitely want to keep them. Because yeah. just and like you know what Denise and her husband saying, you know, yeah. well, any just... mature trees we can keep, we want to keep. Yeah. If we have to just sandwich the fence in between the trees and fit them in, we're going to try to do that for sure. Yeah. Like everyone thinks developers cut down trees because they're just don't want, I mean, if we can keep trees, of course, it it's, saves us money because we all want privacy too. So we, we want to keep as much as we can. You know, and they help um, also the privacy in my backyard from the new build that's behind me as well. Yeah. Yeah, we're not I'm planning to do anything with those. I, I Now I know which ones you're talking about. I think they're here. Yeah. They're just not indicated on, on this yeah, on this plan that's, because it only covers yeah. our property. <laughs> I assume they were staying yeah. because we had talked about it previously, but we were talking about trees right now. So I thought I would bring it up. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't see the marked here either. Yeah. Oh, one and eight. One and eight. Mm, so good sense. Yeah. Property line. Okay. Yeah, I, I did not mark on the survey either. So I, but I know which ones you're talking about now. Yeah. yeah, they'll be remaining. Yeah, yeah, they look like they've been there for for ages, for for decades. Yeah, they're very big and very old. Yeah. Just so I can I can get it on my radar, Paulette, if you don't mind. What's your address? I'm at three two nine Hinchy. Okay, good good to know. I'll just I'll keep in mind, you know, for this. For the trees and if we if we keep this discussion going and in any way um cheryl i'm so sorry i if you'd like to know that's okay <laughs> i'm sorry i was going to ask about uh drainage and any difference in um the height of the land compared to what it is now the finished height of the land compared to what it is now uh, more on the hinchy side than the other side because uh, just wondering if the grade is going to change in the end and just a concern about any uh, runoff and drainage to neighboring properties if you give me a sec i'll bring up the grading and drainage plan um the the grading's not changing show along the pro like near the property lines at all but what we're also doing is along the property line there is a underground um pipe essentially that's going to catch it catches the water around the perimeter of the site to bring it into our system so there's hopefully no runoff going into the neighboring properties good that's good the city really has you know, they've mandated where all developers now have to plan for a hundred year storm which basically just means you know the one in every hundred year storm that happens we got to be able to control our water within our site on our roof where you have a lot of roof drains like as well to catch the water on the roof it controls it so when a major storm, there might be six inches of water on our roof and it'll slowly go into the city sewer system, not all at one time. And where is that drainage? Is it on the west side of the property then or the east well, side? We have it on both. So Jeremy's showing oh, it right okay. now. I'm just trying to bring up the plan that shows. Yeah, here you go. Here is the, here's the, the storm drainage plan. Yeah, okay. So the arrows indicate the movement of water. Right. So you can sort of follow it. It's not a traffic direction. <laughs> it's movement of water. So, and these are uh, drains that pick up water along the way to uh, manholes. And so, although we'll be draining towards this way, it picked up mostly as we have to retain so much water on site before our, any excess can be discharged to the street. And same thing on this side, the drainage here will, will 
we drain towards the street as well. We have to pick up a lot of it along the way. It, okay. it is a scare for a lot of residents when new construction comes in. How's it going to affect, you know, especially in some older neighborhoods where drainage isn't always the greatest. Um, and in my experience, new construction actually usually improves a situation of drainage because the city is so strict now in their mandate. We can't just let water just flow wherever it wants. We actually have to control it within our site for X amount of time and release it at a slower rate into the city. Yeah, that's not what's happened in the last two builds, one that just finished and one that was about a year ago where neighbors are now being flooded. So that's why I asked the question. Is that um, more for like single family homes and like semi-detached homes? Uh, back to front double and a triplex. Yeah, so those those particular types of projects aren't governed by a site plan control, so they don't have to go through as strenuous of a, of a uh, engineering uh, ordeal uh, to get this done. We, we have to work with a, a number of uh, engineers of the city in order to get an approved drainage plan by both the city and us to, to work to handle stormwater. We also have to hold on to a 100-year stormwater um, event, so that's not something you'd have to do in anything a triplex or, uh, sorry, a triplex or under. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Paulette, the guys behind you would probably have to have done similar stuff that we had control their water and things like yeah. that. They would have had a drainage plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw Candy S uh, had a similar question in the chat. I'm going to put the drainage plan in there just for anyone who's with us currently wants to open up. But um, I think they also had a question on what are you guys going to be doing the permeable driveway or? Do you, do you know the plans for that yet to, to share? That's just, no, we're just doing an asphalt laneway going all the way to the back. Hmm. Um, but with those catch basins going along. Yes, we well. have catch basins throughout, yeah. Correct, yeah. Um, we do have to retain some water in those catch basins to, to, in order to hold on to some of the water and have only a slow release into the city storm system. Yeah. Which, is there any way we can, yeah. Is there any way we can convince you to do a permeable driveway, which will be better? for all of us. You know, I did look at it, I'll be honest, we looked at it and Jeff, he really, he brought it up a lot too and he really wanted it as well. The problem we find with these permeable driveways is when you get high traffic areas, so garbage trucks, things like this that come in, the maintenance of them is just a nightmare. They, they, they crack, they, the leveling gets off and you have to basically fix them and replace them every few years. And it ends up being just a maintenance nightmare. If this was gonna be a, well, I don't want to say it. we're debating if it's a condo rent. If it's going to be a true condo, it's a little easier. You can build it into a reserve fund and have the owners pay. Um, but it just makes it, it makes it a maintenance, uh, an extreme liability. And when you get the snow plows coming through in our winters and you see trucks coming through and they're plowing, they end up damaging these permeable laneways. The only one I've seen done in the last few years, there was one in Westboro uh, off Kenwood. They did one and it looked like... It looked rough within a few years, but I do understand. And Jeff, you know, I, I want to say he did push. And I just it, well, I remember us talking about it at the earlier meeting. Yeah, yeah. we talked about. So we were going to do it for sure. We were going to do it. I still, I, mean, I was still open to it. In the beside your house, beside the fence, that parking lot, we were going to do that in a full permeable, uh, uh, paved area. Like, it would be fully permeable, but then just through our site plan control. They decided they wanted that to be a landscaped area, and so we removed the parking lot from back there. So now that's all grass in the backyard, as opposed. Yeah, to that'll be better with the grass, obviously, yeah. than 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 yeah. asphalt. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think we ever really pushed on having a permeable laneway, because just with the heavy trucks, it's just too damaging. But for like a rear parking lot for six, seven cars, that's a lot more manageable because you don't have heavy equipment going back there. Sorry if there was any confusion, though. Yeah. No, I just remember us talking about it earlier. Yeah. Isn't the garbage at the front of the building though? So would there be any heavy trucks going to the back? Well, all the all the snow removing trucks are going to be going through the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, True. We do have gar garbage is there. The garbage is there, but I don't know. I think garbage trucks still will be turning into our site to pick up. Yeah, um, it, it's something you don't you don't the alternative is to bring the garbage. Um, bins out to the curb then they got to sit there they sometimes block the sidewalk this is always preferable right when you can put them in here in our driveway the truck comes into the laneway lifts up the bin 
it's always better for the neighborhood if you can have it on sit on site waiting for the pickup. It would be a, there'd be a lot more complaints in the community if we had our bin sitting out on a sidewalk. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, no, this is much better. You're right. Yeah. But my, my big concern with the permeable, it's garbage trucks, but it's really it's the snow trucks. It's the plows that come in. They damage those permeable pavers all the time. If you think about it, like, you know, people that have interlocked driveways, I mean, they end up having to replace those driveways every few years, the interlocking. Sorry, just getting back to um, leave some empty space again. And I'll, I'll give Cheryl a chance to, to take any notes as well. Yeah, I know that the, the permeal driveway came up previously with Jeff. I, I can't speak to, I, he should be up to date on this, I'm sure with the landscaping, yeah. but you know, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that. If he, he sells some concerns, we'll, we'll be chatting in, I'm sure. Um, do any of the other neighbors uh, have any any questions or concerns? Um, do you guys need a retaining wall at all for that drainage, or is the catch basins enough? I'm just bringing it up because it's been, no. as Cheryl said, an issue with um, some drainage. We do have a retaining wall. It's tough to see on this plan. Jeremy, do you have the yeah, landscape plan again? Yeah. 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 Actually, no. You can just show the way you're doing. It's the blue there, and then it goes along. Yeah. Well, that last one. There it is. Uh, I think yeah. everything on the right hand side is all a retaining wall here. Okay, so yeah, it's always tough to spot. So, yeah. it's, you know, if you go to the last much. plan, Jeremy, go to the one you just had before on, or just you had three of them you're showing. Uh, yeah, right there. So, everything yeah. dark on the top left, that's all a retaining wall. Okay. And I think there's a little, yeah, there is there's a little, a little, little one in the Hinchy properties as well. Okay. So that's for the, the Crothers ones and also for some of the Hinchy properties. Yeah. This is actually an existing retaining wall. Um, there's a concrete, it's a concrete curb kind of thing that sits about it's probably 18 inches or something like that. It's sort of retaining back. Yeah, so it's a small yeah. little wall. And, and then this one here will be is proposed new. And then we kind of meet the existing grade as you get into the uh, 276 uh, Crothers there. And there's just there's another one on the uh, west side of the property there along the Hinchy properties. Yeah, I'll zoom in. I think there's some elevations here, right? So you can see it's two, uh, one, six. So yeah, six, six, three. It's, a, yeah. it's just a small little one. Yeah, yeah. it's it's about two two feet at the most. I think somewhere along here. Yeah, uh, the most. Yeah, six, six four, four one there, yeah. six four seven three. Yeah, so you're about you're about a. 0.6 meters, which is 24 inches. Yeah, okay. 24 inches. Yeah. So, just uh, good to know for for any kind of concerns around that, and just since it's been a, a topic that probably should have been discussed earlier rather than later with uh, some of the the other builds we've seen, but in those cases, I think it's been more of a, an infill issue than. Is the I'm just wondering if the owner is a, we haven't met this person I don't believe is the owner at, at two two six six Carruthers here just um, no they don't have I don't believe they have a computer and he works okay. evenings I believe okay um, I have his phone number um, his elderly mother he lives there with his very elderly mother it'd be nice to get in communications with them because this is sort of something to work on together this this retaining wall and, and how we're going to deal with that i mean that's you know we don't need to get into it right now is this final landscaping stuff we'll do and the existing one can remain for now for most of the construction but it'd be nice to have their contact info for, for those details at the end yeah i do have his contact information i just have to go back and find where i put it And Cheryl, I'm sure you can you can email it to them later. But if you need me to make the connection, uh, you know, I'm happy to keep any info passed along to everybody. Um, yeah. and, and just to go back to, I think we were speaking to somebody about their internet. It was is that somebody at two seven six Carlos, or is that somebody here on this corner? Sorry, that's uh, west, so it's further down. It's on the Hinchy side. We live on Hinchy. Mm -hmm. so on yeah, so oh. and you're three, three, can nine. I ask you're you're over here? Three three nine. Nope, one over to the oh, three three nine. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, right there. Okay. And you are you your Bell or your Rogers, sir? No. Yeah, we're Bell. Bell. Okay. All right. 
so it's okay we have two then okay so it's you and and this person here i believe is bell so we have to work on on uh, working with bell to to get these wires at least temporarily moved around yeah okay so we if you could uh we get your contact info too so we can figure that as well that'd be great thanks sure dan it would be nice to once you really get into the site in a few weeks just kind of you know, people that are here on this meeting and just like immediately abutting our uh, property, you know, getting their info and any, any surprises, anything, you know, that'll disturb, you can always just send a map, set up a, you know, a Armstrong email trail going. So a group email that can let them know everything. Yeah. And we'll establish a little drop box as uh, people want to drop off some questions or concerns, um, sort of a mailbox if they want to. I work from home, so feel free to knock on my door. So I'm always here. <laughs> I'm almost stuff. always here too. So <laughs> you'll um, see me walking around there. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a heads up, and it won't be until you're getting to the landscaping and that, but at the where our properties meet at that uh, where the new fence is going to go up on your side of the property is a weed called it's one of Ontario's uh, noxious weeds. And it, call, it spreads all over the place into my backyard and you don't want it on yours. It's called Japanese knotwood. And uh, so when it's time to dig, you want, you want to go deep and get those roots um, or else whatever kind of landscaping you do, it'll be ruined. So that's just a heads up for the future. Thank you. Yeah, Japanese knotwood is pretty, pretty nasty when it comes to that kind of thing, oh my God. Um, it's been a real burden. Yeah, I've seen that some of the work they've done in, in Hampton Park to even get rid of it. And it seems like they need so many volunteers to even get part of it um, in the park. So I can't imagine, you know, with a residential property. Oh, but sorry, that's totally a digression. Um, yeah, I'll keep the, the floor open. We're, we've still got, you know, as much time as we need. Uh, do any of the other neighbors or Cheryl, anybody um, have any more questions related to anything at all or any asks about um, you know, any of the future work? If not, I'll keep talking. Yeah. Go That's ahead. Okay. I'm just curious, There's a, the guys came down and cut down all those trees right in their backyard, not backyard, we don't have a yard, but so now there's all these stumps. So who's gonna come and get those stumps out? Is that gonna be a big operation? That'll be part of our, our work when we when we go to put the, the fencing in and all that stuff. Yeah, and we gotta take out that chain link that's there. Yeah. It, it, for now, it, it, we, you know, I think it's probably easier to leave the, it leaves a little of a buffer right now for the for the construction fence since it's on the inside, but, and like, uh, if I go back a little bit. Yeah, sorry, Denise, are the stumps you're referring to, are they on our property or on your property? Half. <laughs> what do you mean? You're half, half and half. half. Yeah. This, if I can okay. find the survey here. Give me a second. No, we definitely have to get rid of those stumps. I'm just surprised they weren't uh, taken out of by now. Usually he would have stumped them, but perhaps is the chain link fence in the way, Jeremy? It, it, they grow through the chain link oh. fence. That's why they weren't removed. Jeff. Okay. That, that's why. So I mean, they when we remove the chain, chain link, link, they'll come back to. Uh, yeah. They'll come back to do that when we remove the chain link. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm just surprised because, you know, it, it's part of their contract to do the stuff they call it stumping. Yeah, uh, but if the chain link fence was going right through it, that's probably why they left it for now. Yeah. Okay. But definitely, don't feel uh, don't don't feel shy. Let Dan know in a month if it's still there in two months. Like, just keep on them so it's not something that gets overlooked. They're growing through this chain link fence, which is indicated here on the survey, right? So when we go to pull that out, you know, it, it makes more sense for us to do it near the end when we're doing the landscaping. I think. Right. Otherwise, because, you know, we're going to pull out that chain link fence is going to cause some damage to, to your side. Right. Like, you know, we're going to pull out that concrete that's holding it in and all that stuff. Right. So we like to do it at the time when we can fix your area as well. Right. Well, the plan is to open it and remove it and reinstall right away. Exactly. OK, yeah. got you. Well, you need access to like my, our side to our, our yard. I don't know. I guess we it's hard should to say. It ends. Uh, there's there's significant space between our our, our building and uh, and the and the fence, so I think oh, we should okay. be able to get an excavator back there that can handle that. I don't think that's okay. Well, the mini axe will do it. Mini axe will do it. Yeah, exactly. So, 
Thanks. I was just curious. Thanks. Yeah. Once they grow out of the fences, it's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to say I'm, I'm really pleased with um, all the answers you've given. You've got answers to all the questions, which usually doesn't happen. So thank you for that. Um, oh, it's good. It's good to have that you guys have all these questions. Sometimes we do these meetings and it's, you know, the questions don't get asked and people are unsure, but it's good to have some of the to like, you know, ask all the questions because now's the time to, to get some answers when we're all here on a call for sure. Is there going to be any more? meetings like this like during or is this now it's more like one-on-one -on -one kind of more one-on-one -on -one, or if there's someone okay. if there's a, like a home association that wants to like set something they can talk with dan like i said he'll be there you know starting in a few weeks he'll be there most of the time um but it's very easy to set up an email th thread if you want with dan where you get five six homeowners you don't want to open it up to the whole community because then it's just a little overwhelming yeah. but you know you have five six people that can speak and then they can send emails, questions. If Dan knows there's a day coming up where it's going to be louder, something a little more intrusive, then he can send an email let people know. Okay. Yeah, and speaking from our office's point of view, you know, having those emails happen when any of that work happens is, you know, it can, it can go pretty far. Just having this kind of opportunity to have some clear lines of communications, I mean, and just having even, um, you know, knowing who to contact if there's questions about the site or any concerns, that's, you know, an excellent start. But if, if you guys are, you know, prepared to, to keep the, the neighbors in the loop and, you know, a, a good way like that, that's, that's all the better. And I'm sure they would, you know, all feel, feel the same in wanting those heads up and, and kind of clear lines of communication. It, it, it goes a long way. Um, and of course we can help out, but we prefer to, you know, it's, it's good when everyone can, speak directly and not have too many middlemen uh, interfering, getting in the way or anything like that. Um, Cheryl, I see you're still writing, but I'll, I'll defer to you and, and to, to any other neighbors. If there's any final questions, we are at about eight o'clock, which is kind of what I timed this at, but um, you know, now's the opportunity to, to get any questions in before uh, maybe we wrap things up. Here, um, Candy, Candy S asks, what yeah. is uh, the plan for 268? No, we're just going through the design stage of that now. It's gonna be, we're just, we're not sure if it's, what the use will be, if it's a single family or a duplex, um, but the plan is to not start that construction until next summer, to when this building is, uh, you know, 90% complete. Just a little lot that's left, just a tiny little lot, so yeah. So that, Candy, that question came up a little bit earlier. We're gonna be using that site mostly for probably the trades to be parking and staging of stuff to avoid, you know, overwhelming the street with cars. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's excellent to see that because Armstrong is, is, is pretty, pretty small and I'm sure people yeah. will experience it, especially as you know, walking to Parkdale market, it kind of ends up being a little feeder street for people and, and for cars as well. Um, I mean, I I don't have any other questions, but I again leave the floor open. Okay. Um, I'll just bring up about uh, 268 Crothers. So when you do go to work on that, um, I don't know. Oh no, the building next door has got his driveway there. It's okay. Because when they did the other building, um, beside 266, they completely exposed his foundation and it's a very old house, but you've got the driveway on that side, so it should be fine. Yeah, driveway's on both sides for so both 276 and 268, there's a driveway on both sides. Okay. Sometimes that can be good though, it's an opportunity to do some waterproofing on those old foundations when you do expose them. That's the, yeah, but that didn't happen. Up. <laughs> you got to get together with the developer sometimes. It's a, it's a great symbiosis sometimes. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, it sounds like we've probably heard all the questions, but, um, you know, I don't know if maybe now or afterwards, um, you know, Joey, um, Dan, maybe more specifically, if you want to kind of put 
your email or your phone number um, for that, that worksite sort of mobile that you're going to have. If you want to maybe send that to our office and I can help send to Cheryl or you can cut us out you know, and send it to Cheryl directly, she could probably help get that number to uh, the neighbors and we could just make sure that the, basically the next step we have going forward is having those, those lines of communication kind of known and, and set up for everybody. Um, would that be sort of amenable to you guys? Um, and yeah, I think Cheryl, these be, once we get him a, get a, a phone number for Dan for this site in particular, we can mm -hmm. do a little, little drop around uh, the neighbors around here. If someone's mm -hmm. not, you know, if they don't get it and another neighbor did, you know, hopefully we can, someone can give it to Cheryl and she could distribute it to the people that would, you know, benefit from having the information. Cheryl, I know you're not one of the immediate neighbors, but perhaps if we drop it with Paulette or someone, they could share that with you. Yep. And go from there. That's a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drop off sounds best in, in this case. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Maybe all the ice uh, will be gone then. Sorry, was and that you can actually walk. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe all the ice will be gone. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I appreciate uh, you know Jeff's office obviously arranging this, kind of doing an intro, putting a face to the neighbors, and um, you know, although I know construction isn't you know, you know, you're not excited when there's construction in your rear yard, we'll try to make it as as painless as possible and try to be as quick as possible to get this done. And hopefully the end result will be an improvement to the community. I just wanted to echo, thank you, uh, Joey and team for that openness. I, I'm not an immediate neighbor. Um, I sit on the board, um, I'm the president for the HCA right now, and I'm on a major learning curve and I always defer to Cheryl who knows so much more. But it's 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 really um, the tone of the conversation tonight was uh, was really welcome and open. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. It was it's nice to see all these questions come with some some straight answers, and um, we appreciate that you you took the time to walk us through everything. And if I can just say out loud real fast. Um, Jeremy, if you don't mind, could you, um, I accidentally made you host instead of co-host. I wanna make sure the recording ends up in, in my hands uh, and not perhaps accidentally download for you. So if you don't mind giving that back no, for me. Give that back, hold on. Make no pro. Problem. There you go, You're, there you go. You should be host now. Yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. I just wanna make sure the recording was yeah. available for, for anyone who might end up being interested. So. Um, with that, we'll wrap up. Thanks everyone for taking Perfect. the time to come out tonight and thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Good night. See ya. Thanks. Have an excellent night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.